Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I am going to show you how to paint Dreadwalker zombies. Here is the list of colors which I will be using in this video. I will also leave it down in the description below. I have the miniatures fully assembled and I use my airbrush to prime them with a mix of Mechanicus Thunder Grey and Dawnstone to have a slightly lighter tone of grey for some of the miniatures flash tone. If you do not have an airbrush, then just give a Mechanicus Thunder Grey prime and once it's dry, make a mix of colours and paint your miniatures with them. I picked 5 out of 20 random zombies and I'm going to base paint the skin with Rackard Flash. I am using a small layer brush because I am only painting the skin areas and I am trying to avoid the clothes because later on I am using the same prime color for some of the clothes to get a nice variation. Then I picked 10 out of the remaining miniatures and I do the same thing but using for the skin Iron Rack skin as a base color. I am left with 5 random zombies which their skin base color is going to be the mix of the Mechanicus Standard Grey and Dawnstone. Now the starting color is done for their skin. I am taking out 5 out of the 10 Irak skin base painted zombies and I apply a mix of Dragon of Nightshade and Lamia Medium, a 1 to 3 part ratio, and I apply it onto the skin area. Now on the rest of the Iron Rack skin painted zombies, I am using another mix of Athonian Camo Shade and Lamia Medium. And I do the exact same thing with them by applying it onto their skin. I also picked out two of the Rakar Flash base painted zombies and two of the previously washed zombies with the Dragon of Nightshade to make more random appearance and different state of their decaying body. Now I'm going to use Raikland Flash Shade and I am applying it onto the Mechanicus Standard Grey and Dawnstone base painted skins. In my mind they are the poor unlucky ones that got burned to death or they just crawled out of the mudded bloody battleground. It really is your imagination really. I also give this wash onto the Rackard Flash base painted zombies to make a visual look who are the newest crew for the zombie horde and they just risen recently just like in the Resident Evil for instance. Now I'm going to make a mix of Reichland Flash Shade with Lamia Medium, a 1 to 3 part ratio and I am adding it onto the rest of the zombies which were painted with iron rack skin and then washed some of them with the bluish tone and the greenish tone to still make these contrasts visible on the skin and still give a slightly flesh tone to the zombies. Now the washes are done, I am going to start to dry brush the skins. First I am going to use Storm Mermaid Fur and I dry brush the burned dark skin 
to give a slight brown tone to the skin and make a nice transition of the grey base tone. Following it with Bookman's Glow to add a little more brighter mix to the skin. Now I'm going to use Rock Earth Flash and I am dry brushing the skins which were base painted with this color. I am doing it very gently just to have on the flatter areas an olive in contrast with it and the recesses are staying dark. I also use this color on the palms and the feet palms of the darker skin zombies to give a more natural look. And I am using for the remaining zombies Iraq skin, which they were base painted with. The same method as the Rocker Flash ones, a very subtle, gentle dry brushing on the skin only, just to correct in the flatter parts where the washes might have ended up in there. And now that the dry brushing is done, I can start layer and edge highlight the skins. First I'm going to focus on the burned zombies. I am using the same color which I dry brush them with, which is Bookman's Glow, and I am focusing on the raised surfaces and edges to give a smooth transition for the skin. After that, I am going to use KDM Flash Tone and I edge highlight the sharpest features of the skin. Main focusing points are the features of the face, the hands and the open wounds to make them more visible. However, I am also making very thin lines on some of the flatter areas where might be some muscle tissues that can be seen as well. Now I'm going to use Rockart Flash and I start layering the ones which were based painted with this color. The main reason is just to pick out a bit more some of the raised surfaces and get a smoother transition which I did with the dry brushing. As for the Anorak skinned zombies, I am only adding an edge highlight with Deep Kim Flash, picking out all the sharpest features. Now I'm going to base paint the bones, for this I am using Wraith Bone as a base color. I am using a small layer brush due to the bone parts are quite small. I am using Agrex Earthshade Wash and I apply it onto the bones.
Once it's dry, then I am adding a thin wash of Kerber Crimson Wash to the bones to represent the flesh is still around the bone parts. I also add it into some smaller holes and open wounds. And I also add a small amount in the eye sockets. And now I'm going to use Flayed One Flesh to base paint the eyes and also I use this color to etch highlight the rocker flesh base painted zombies. I am going back to use Wraith Bone and I use a small layer brush to paint all the zombies teeth. Then I'm going to make a mix of Wraith Bone and Kerber Crimson Wash. Simply, instead of adding water to the paint, I use the wash. Pretty much does the same, however it runs much more. So I am making sure my brush is not overloaded with it. And I layer the skulls and the bones to give it a slight pinkish bone to these areas to represent the transition between the flesh and bone. And also I leave the recesses dark so that it is looking like flesh between. And I'm going to use again Wraith Bone and I do an edge highlight on the sharpest features of the bones. Don't need much, really just on the edges, a small amount to make them more pop out. I want my zombies to have a real dead, dried out eye look, so for this I'm using Demonet Hide and with my Psycho Brush from Army Painter I put a dot in each eye. To me it really gives the mindless zombie look. And I finish the eyes by adding a small amount of art coat to make the eyes more shiny and natural. Now that the skin is done, I'm going to move on to their clothes and fabrics and really it is entirely up to you what colors you want to use. If you want, you can make them more uniform look by making them paint in the same way. However, I did mine more randomly. To me, they are just poor villagers who fell either naturally or because of tragedy. So for this, I decided to paint them as many colors as possible. Some of them are left with the mix which they were primed with, but I also used Mechanica Standard Grey, Corn Red, Dumbuk Brown, XV88, Sandry Dust, Karak Stone, Townstone, Steel Legion Drab, Rhinox Hide, Morphing Brown, The Fang. So first I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade Wash and I am applying it to all of the base painted clothes and fabrics to be meshed with the scenario which is simply dirty and used. Now for instance which are base painted with corn red and dumbo brown I am applying a second layer to have a nice strong darker contrast especially in the recesses. I am being neat and careful especially around the skin areas not to have the wash there if it happens, I quickly wipe dry my brush and just start soaking it up in the area, the color. Later, with some water on my brush, I wipe it clean. I am using a small layer brush, especially around the skin areas, to have a nice controlled movement on these areas.
Once it's dry, I am going back to use the base colors. First, I'm going to use corn red. And with a medium layer brush, I start layering the flatter parts of the chosen colored clothes. Now I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab and obviously the ones which were painted with this color I add a layer but such as in this example I am adding a highlight to the ones which I base painted with XV88 and Morphang Brown. I am using Mechanica Standard Grey as a layer to the ones which were painted with this color. I also layer the clothes which have been base painted with the fang so in this way I have a slightly bluish grey clothes as well. Doing these little changes gives some extra variations to the zombies. For the Zendru Dust base painted clothes, I am going to use Morgus Bone as a layer. I want a quite bright cream shirt or blouse or it can be even a skirt. I am leaving the deepest recesses dark as in the transition goes onto those areas to be still seen as dirty clothes. And I'm going to use Dumbo Brown and I start to layer the ones which have been base painted with this color but also it can be used on some of the ones which have been base painted with corn red just to have a different color variation for the browns. And I'm using Wazdaka Red for the previously painted corn red base painted areas. I use a small layer brush and I do an edge highlight on the small sharp features and I also do a small layer onto the flatter parts. I am going to use Admin Stratum Grey for the Mechanica Standard Grey base painted areas. I, again, I use a small layer brush and I do an edge highlight onto the highlights.
I also use this technique of highlight with the same administratum gray on the rust gray base painted areas and also the storm vermin fur areas. I am using Zendry Dust as a nice highlight and also just a touch of layer onto the previously painted Steel Legion Trap base painted areas. And I use Bane Blade Brown onto the Morning Fang Brown base painted areas, such as the belts and also some of the strings that can be found, but also onto the clothes which are painted with Morning Fang Brown. And I am going to use Morm Feng Brown first as a layer onto the Dumbo Brown base painted areas. And I also use it as an edge highlight onto the Rhinox Hide base painted areas, such as the corset, some of the belts, and the clothes. And I'm going to use again Zendry Dust, but this time it's just an edge highlight onto the previously layered clothes with Mornfang Brown, just to have a nice highlight. And with Screaming Skull, I do an edge highlight with a small layer brush onto the Zendry Dust base painted areas. And now I'm going to use Wasdaka Red and I use an extra small artificial brush and I dilute it quite heavily with water and then just adding a little drop underneath each of the eyes just to have it a bit more gruesome undead look to the models. So now that the fabrics and clothes are finally finished, I can focus on the roots, the wood details, the ropes and strings. 
So first I'm going to use dried bark as a base color for all the roots and all the wooden pieces that can be found on each and every model. Now I'm going to use Death World Forest and I use a small dry brush and I just apply it gently onto each of the roots. Now I'm going to use Athonian Camo Shade Wash and I apply it onto all of the roots which are also previously been dry brushed with the Death World Forest so it will be blending the two colors nicely. As for the wooden parts I am using Noon Oil Wash and I apply it onto the wooden part areas. While the washes are drying, I am using Zandri Dust as a base color for the ropes. Following it with Seraphim Sepia Wash, I apply it onto the Zandri Dust areas. Now I'm going to use Gorthor Brown and I start edge highlighting and layering the wooden parts such as the sides handle and also the wooden gravestone and some of the edges of the wooden planks or logs Now I'm going to base paint the center part of each log. I'm using Zendry Dust for this. I also decided to do an edge highlight onto some of the broken, torn wooden parts just to give it a bit more fresher look onto each of the edges. Now to blend them together with the previously painted areas with the wooden parts I'm using again Athonian Camo Shade and I am applying a generous amount onto the log pieces and just a small amount around the torn broken wooden parts. Now I'm going to use Screaming Skull. I use a small layer brush and I start highlighting the ropes and I also do an edge highlight on each of the sharpest details in the center of the lock piece just to get it highlighted. Now I can focus on the guts and brains. First color I'm going to use is Administratum Grey as a base color. 
I use a small layer brush due to the small details and I start base painting the brains and also some of the guts. Now I'm going to apply Druki Violet Wash onto the Administratum Grey base painted areas. Once it's dry, then I am applying a second wash with Karoberg Crimson. And with Slanish Grey, I do an edge highlight and just a little amount of layering onto each of the guts and brains. Also some of them has their tongues out so I kind of do the same technique with those as well. Now I can move on to the different hair variations. The base colors that I chose for them are Rhinox Hide, Mechanicus Standard Grey, Ushap Tibon, Administratum Grey, Storm Mermaid Fur, and Abaddon Black. First, I'm going to use a Thonium Camo Shade wash and I'm going to apply it onto the Ushap Tibon base painted hair areas. I also apply it onto some of the Storm Vermin fur base painted hairs. I'm going to use Kerber Crimson Wash and I picked out two of the female zombies that had the Mechanicus Standard Grey base painted hair and I'm applying it onto the hair. I am using Agrax Earthshade Wash on the rest of the Mechanicus Standard Grey base painted hair areas. And I also use the Agrax Shade Wash onto the Administratum Grey base painted hair. And I use Noon Oil Wash onto the Rhinox Hide base painted hair areas and I also apply it onto the rest of the Storm Vermin Fur base painted hair areas too. Now that the washes are dry and done, I'm using Gorford Brown 
I use a small layer brush and I start layering the Rhinox height base painted hair areas. and edge highlighting it with some Karak stone. I am using ashen grey on the black base painted hair areas. I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing it, picking out all the raised surfaces. And with Mechanical Standard Grey, with a small layer brush, I do an edge highlighting onto the raised surfaces and sharpest details. Now I'm going to use Dawnstone and I start layering the Mechanic Standard Grey base painted hairs. And with Administratum Grey, I do an edge highlight onto the sharpest details. I use the Administratum Grey again onto the previously base painted one and then just do a layer leaving the deepest recesses dark. And with Wolfwan Grey I do an edge highlight onto the Administratum Grey base painted hair pieces. And I'm using Warp Fiend Grey. I use it as an edge highlight onto the hairs which I gave them a wash with Kerber Crimson. Some of the models are bold so I want for them to have some hair as well. For that I'm using the base skin color in this example is iron rock skin and I mix with tone stone a one to one part ratio and I am applying it onto the head where the hair might be so that it has like a very short hair now I'm gonna move on to the metallic details 
So first I'm going to use Lead Belcher as a base color. I use a medium layer brush and I start base painting all the metallic details. The shovels, the armor pieces, the side blades, and so on. After that I'm going to use Balthazar Gold and some of the fallen warriors with full armor. I want to give a bit more appearance look. So all the rims on the shield, maybe the helmet, the rim parts, some of the shoulders, the knee pads. Some of the other models has uh, the bells and some other minor details. I am adding this as a base color. Now I'm going to apply some Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the metallic details. On the larger area such as the shield, I am adding a generous amount just to make it more dirty or grimy. Taking away all the excess parts where are gathering the paints during the drying. Once it's dry, I want to make a more grimy look, so I'm using Typhus Corrosion first. I use a small layer brush and I'm applying it onto the areas randomly. I apply a decent amount, then with my fingertip I just remove it, just to have it a bit of more definition way to it. Once it's done and dry, I am using Valeo Model Wash Dark Rust and I'm applying it more or less on the same areas where I added before the Typhus Corrosion. And again, where I see it way too much, just with my fingertip, I remove that. I want to have this paint more or less in the recesses mainly. Once it's dry, I can start layering and edge highlighting. For this I am using Storm Host Silver first. I use a small layer brush and I do an edge highlight on all the metallic details. And I also try to make some scratch marks, especially on the shovel that it has been used for digging. For example here on the shield I also pick out all the pins and pegs. I also base paint on the gravestones all the little pins and also the scratch marks. As for the gold details, I am using Psychorex Bronze as an edge highlight and I start edge highlighting all the metal 
the medallion for instance and also on the armored fallen soldier I do an edge highlight onto all of the rims just to make it like a nice brass look onto the armor I also use it on the bell as well to have it a nice highlight Now I'm going to focus on the gravestones and other details. First I am going to use Steel Legion Drab as a base color for the soil and dirt details which some of the freshly risen undead like to carry them on their back. And I also base paint the parchment which is nailed to the back of the fallen. It is also worth mentioning that I base painted all the gravestones with Mechanica Standard Grey. Following it with Agrax Earthshade Wash, I apply it onto the Steel Legion Drab area. I also apply the wash onto the gravestones. I apply another wash, Kerber Crimson, but only onto the soil and dirt part. And I'm using a Thonium Camo Shade wash onto the gravestones, mainly in the recesses, just to give it a bit more moldy old look. Once the washes are dry, first I'm going to use Storm Vermin Fur and with a small layer brush I start edge highlighting the sharpest features of the gravestones. Then I'm going back to Steel Agent Drab and with my trusty old brush I do a dry brushing onto the soil and dirt part. As for the grass I am using Oak Green Camo as a base color and I start base painting all the grass areas. I apply a generous amount of a thorn income shade onto the grass.
once the wash is completely dry I'm going back to use Ocrine Camo and I start edge highlighting the grasses And with a Shapti bone, I just add on to the tip of each grass as it has been cut. Now for the parchment, I'm using again Steel Legion Drab. And with my small layer brush, I start layering the parchment and on the flatter area, I'm sort of making very thin lines as in order to keep it dirty. Now I'm going to use Zandri Dust and I pretty much do the same technique before. Again, I do like a sort of edge highlighting and also on the flatter area of the parchment I do sort of very thin lines blended together to have that old dirty look on the parchment. With Morgas Bone, I do an edge highlight onto the sharpest features of the parchment. And finishing the parchment with some Abaddon Black, I thin it down quite heavily with water. I use a small layer brush and I'm trying to make very thin, small zigzaggy lines as there are some writings on the parchment. I am using Nagar of Night as a base color for the roses. And I use Shopti Bone as a base color for the candles. I am going to base paint the rats with stone vermin fur. Once it's dry and then I'm applying Noon Oil Wash onto the Storm Vermin Fur Rats. Seraphim sepia wash onto the candles.
now that the fur part on the rats are done I am going to use Bugman's glow on their skin here I start base painting the tail the end of each feet I also add a very little amount on the alive rats head especially around the nostrils and the mouth a little bit on the inside of the ear and just like a touch where the eyes should be On the skin is dry, I am using Reikland Flash Shade Wash and I decided to leave this little fella with the Storm Mermaid Fur Base Painted Area Fur, so I apply it onto the fur part as well and also onto the skin While the rats are drying, I am using Screaming Skull. I use a small layer brush and I start layering the candles, leaving all the deepest recesses as dark as possible. And with Wraith Bone, I use a small layer brush and I just do an edge highlight on the sharpest features of the candles. And finishing the candles with Abaddon Black, I quickly base paint all the strings of the candles. Now that the candles are done, I'm going to use Cadium Flash Tone and I start edge highlighting all the skin details on the rats, especially around the mouth part, a bit on the ear and the tail. As for the decapitated rat, I am using Kerber Crimson Wash around the head area and I also apply it around the hand of the zombie. As for the alive rat, I am using Abaddon Black and with an extra small artificer brush I just use a dot for the eyes and also just for the nose and finishing the fur with some dawn stone I do an edge highlight onto the sharpest raised areas of the fur. And to finish the whole zombie squad, I am using blood for the blood god as a final touch to make them as gruesome as possible. Needless to say, this is the most fun part to do and will bring the whole squad together. 
I use a small layer brush and I start making thin droplets from the eyes, the mouth, maybe from the nose, around the recesses where the bone and skin meets. I also use a small sponge and dabbing it onto their clothes and armors and swords, also onto the decapitated rat head and on their hands how a mindless feral zombie should look like in the grim fantasy world of Warhammer. And here is my squad of Dreadwalker zombies based and fully finished. Needless to say, I might have put it a bit far too much time and energy to paint each and one with different colors, but once they are put together, all this chaos of different variations of the colors just makes a perfect match for poor souls or villagers who have fell and has risen to unite as one mindless army march and feast on their enemies. I took inspiration from World of Warcraft back in the time I was all over with the undead and also Resident Evil where you constantly find random zombies all over Raccoon City. Overall in the end I had so much fun with them and I hope this video gives you too some inspiration for your zombie army. If you enjoyed this super long video, please do hit the like button and maybe share it with your friends. Also check out my other video tutorials, maybe you will find some other inspirations. If you enjoy the contents that I make, also you can subscribe to my channel. And special thanks to my Patreons, Gaten, Vito, Leo, Daniel, who are supporting me on Patreon as well. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Cheers.